today we're going to be looking at Dolphin Cove Limited. Dolphin Cove is a company that everybody should be familiar with, but just in case you've never heard about them before, I'm going to get into a, a little bit about their history, talk about what, what they do to generate revenues, and then I'm going to be going through the usual things that we do for our, our stock reviews. We're going to look at the financials. There's their Q1 for 2023 and their annual report. Here are some elements of the annual report that I think is worth going through just so that we can understand the context of how this, this business functions. And we're gonna look at their price history using our sponsors platform, JMMB Moneyline. And then what we're gonna do next is look at their dividend history. No, the, Dolphin Cove is a dividend paying company. Uh, that's one of the things we like to see companies paying dividends. So we're gonna look at that. And then finally we close out with any news that we may be able to find out about the company. So it's gonna be another great review. If you're new here, I'll explain a bit more about what we do a little later on, but let's begin. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't wanna invest in some way? Here at Learn, Grow, Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn, Grow, Invest. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to produce wealth. Thank you for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. We pray, Lord, that we'll be able to use this information shared today to make a wise investment decision. And we thank you for this community in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, let me see how this goes here. Yep, there we go. So I'm actually working with one screen today. It's going to be very interesting because I'm not used to a one screen setup. So I actually have another screen that's going to show me if I'm actually sharing what I think I'm sharing. <laughs> so if I seem a little nervous, then that's why, because I'm just not entirely sure that I'll be showing what I think I'm showing, but it should be all good. So before I go any further, I have to say that anything that I discuss here is for discussion, education, entertainment, and illustrative purposes only, and should not be construed as professional financial advice, a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell any securities, including Dolphin Cove that we'll be looking at today. I did mention before the areas that we're going to go through. This is what you're seeing here at a a high level this episode is sponsored by jmb moneyline as i mentioned before if you haven't used their platform before be sure to check it out and uh, we'll use use moneyline to look at the price history of the company to try to understand a little bit as to how it's been trading and uh, you know things like 52 week high all of those great insights that we're able to get from the the moneyline platform so let's just jump right into it so Dolphin Cove, um, it says here, and all the information that you see here is going to be taken from either the Jamaica Stock Exchange or their website or any news article or information that I'm able to find, right? So none of the information that we share here is generated by us. This, we kind of do research, bring all the information together, and that's what we're presenting here in a format where hopefully you have a good understanding about the company, right? So it says Dolphin Cove is, well, it says Jamaica is a charming island with dazzling natural beauty framed by the, the mangroves, emerald hues, and jaw-dropping azure pristine shoreline scenes. On your next visit to Jamaica, you will dive into a world where nature meets fun and a lifetime experience is waiting for you right at Dolphin Cove, Jamaica. So it's located um, in a 23-acre coveted semi Virgin area, Dolphin Cove, Jamaica will become your paradise sanctuary during your vacations in Jamaica. If you're an adventure traveler, swimming with dolphins in their natural habitat will surely be on the top of your to-do list. And I have had the experience of swimming with the dolphins before. It's an interesting one. Definitely not something you should try to do if you can't swim. Like I tried to do it and I wasn't, I mean, it's not like you're swimming per se, but if you have a fear of water, like I did at the time, could be a little challenging, right? Um, and it says, of course, you can also enjoy other activities. We'll talk about some of those a little bit later. 
And you're seeing here the, the CEO of Dolphin Cove. We're hoping to be able to get an interview with him, uh, Gonzalo Perez. We're hoping to meet with him and hopefully we can get some more insights about the company, right? So in terms of the different experiences that are shared on the website, this is what, what we saw. So it says, come, come, and, come and live a swim with dolphins in Jamaica experience and experience programs like Dolphin Encounter, Swim Adventure, Royal Swim, or Meeting Sharks. Observe beautiful birds, feed them, and add other activities full of adrenaline. This and more you can enjoy at Dolphin Co., right? So you're thinking about a company that provides an experience centered around dolphins, um, other animals, other, you know, sites, adventures, and so on. So they've packaged these experiences and provide them to both locals and tourists. And we're going to get into some of the numbers that we see in their annual report in terms of, you know, number of tourists coming into Jamaica, things like that would impact the, the profitability of this company. So those are some of the things we're going to look at. Well, let me know in the comments below, have you ever been to Dolphin Cove before? Is it something that you've tried? Are you looking forward to trying it? That's the first question. And the next part I wanted to tell me is if, if you are an existing shareholder for this company. All right. So let me know in the comments of this video. So Dolphin Cove had their IPO in, uh, I believe it was 2010. It's not showing it here, but I believe it was 2010. So they had 80 million sh ordinary shares available at a price of $3 per share. Right. So this is definitely not within the time that we had the $1 per, per share IPOs. This was at a time where we saw companies willing to make shares available at a higher price. So it says up to 20 million reserved shares in the invitation are initially reserved for application by the following persons, up to 16 million company reserved and 4 million for key partners. All reserved shares at are priced at the invitation price and must be fully paid on delivery of an application and so on and so forth. The prospectus is available just to a Google search and you'll be able to find it, right? So as I said, I believe this was in 2010, the prospectus is available. Check it out if you're willing to learn more information. In terms of their, their locations, they have one in Montego Bay, one in Puerto Seco, and then the other three would be in Ocho Rios. Um, and I believe the Yaman, um, location was launched sometime last year we'll confirm that as we go through but this is where the locations are and it's it makes sense that it's on that side of the island because you wouldn't have the 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 water and the different you know yard maybe land space to do some of the the activities that they do at at those locations and of course some more details there to tell you how to find the location and such this is the management team. This was taken from the annual report. So of course you can, you know, go through it, learn more about these persons, etc. What we try to do is get a good understanding of who the management team is, just so we could just see how, how, how the company is built out. There are times when you may actually notice movements of management from one company to the next. Maybe it's a, it's a company that's within the same network you know, things of that nature. So we started to include the management team just in case, you know, we're able to track those those movements should they come. In terms of their top 10 shareholders, a World of Dolphins Inc. has roughly, well, just about 80%. Now, um, this is not uncommon. We've seen companies make the, the minimum 20% available and the rest it's is usually split um you know for for remaining shareholders now you're noticing 94.57 percent of shares are within the top 10. this leaves a little on well a little over 20 million shares outside the top 10 that's not a lot so this could could actually have a great impact as to how this stock trades not a lot of volume outside the top 10 so um you know, if you're looking for, if you're if you're considering this as a company for investment, that's something that you want to look at. Uh, notable companies in the top ten or persons in the top ten: QWI Investments at number four, 
uh, we know John John Mahfoud, and of course you're familiar with the JMMB. So those are you know some names that we know from the top ten, but eighty percent rests with World of Dolphins, right? So that's what we see there. In terms of the financials, we look at that next. Let me see. Um, <laughs> so so humble boss is saying he's never been but can't swim so 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 won't have the full experience yeah so you don't so you'll get a life jacket so you don't have to it, it's it's more about your your comfort level with the water um i kind of panicked a little bit <laughs> when i was in the water but um if i should do it again i know that i wouldn't be as fearful because i mean the life jacket is there there's a um a lifeguard there to, to walk you through it but you know, interesting story when he was asking everybody if everybody could swim, nobody said anything. So I wasn't going to be the only one to say I can't swim, that, that that I wouldn't want to do that. So I remember my wife looked at me, she's like, you sure you don't want to say anything? I say, I'm good. But then, yeah, kind of panicked when I was in the water. So when when you look at my photos, you see the hand of the lifeguard holding me up so that I'm staying you know, at, at a certain height above water. So another story for another time, right? So let's look at the financials for Dolphin Cove. So we go through the three statements, the income statement, the profit and loss, and the cash flow statement. What we want to do is look at quarters and, and how they're comparing year, year to date, how they're comparing our revenues growing or shrinking. We, we know for, for a company like this that would have been impacted by the pandemic, have they fully recovered or gotten back to where their 2019 numbers were. That's one of the things we'll be looking at. Our margins in general, you know, improving, the things of that nature. So we want to kind of assess, um, in this case, we're kind of assessing the company against itself. Um, we're, we're not doing any comparison outside for maybe similar companies or, you know, compared to a segment or anything like that. But this kind of helps us to understand how the company is trending in terms of its its profitability so when I look at some graphs here then later on we'll go to to the Q1 report and annual report so here we have revenues and total revenues change year over year so we see where they had um, you know strong revenues in 2019 and then that would have been cut by about 71% for 2020 so that would have been a significant fall off and then of course they saw some growth um, by about 79% from 2020 to 2021. And then since then it has grown again, um, where it seems like it's 7.6, almost doubled to in, into 2022. So we see where they're back to, to uh, 2019, 2018 levels. 2022 was actually higher than 2019 and 2018. So that's something to note that they, they seem to be well on their way in terms of a recovery. Um, <laughs> uh, Aurel is saying, uh, for me, nothing over five feet deep. I'm no, <laughs> I'm no fish, <laughs> right? So, I mean, it, it's something that I think is interesting to experience. Maybe your, 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 your wife or children may find it, it interesting, gentlemen. So don't, don't, don't rule it out. You never know, right? Um, here we're looking at revenues, gross profit, and net income, and how they compare to each other. Of course, we know. 2020 um the impact that would have had so they would have had neg negative income for for 2020 recovered in 2021 to get close to where they would have been in 2019 2022 we saw net income greater than they would have experienced in 2018 2019 right so that follows the same theme again where the numbers for 2022 seem you know stronger than where they were before the pandemic so that's definitely a good sign this is their EPS, and we see where their EPS is the highest it's been in the last five years. And that's, that's something that we like to see headed in the right direction. Uh, let's look at the balance sheet. For the balance sheet, we're looking you know, specifically at things like cash, what, what their cash position is. Is their debt increasing? Are their liabilities increasing? And we look at, I mean, in this case, we wouldn't be concerned about, about inventory, but we may look at receivables if we see those numbers, et cetera. So this is your cash and cash equivalent position. 
they they seem to have been you know um having a healthy cash position in 2021 compared to previous years and still for 2022 above their previous cash levels so we're going to try and read through maybe the mdna maybe the annual report to see if we can get any context as to why they may be holding cash would they have made some investments or are planning to make investments things of that nature that's what we're we're looking at this is their total current assets compared to total current liabilities. So usually we want to see if current assets are able to cover current liabilities. Of course, that's our, our current ratio. So that's what we're seeing here. So it's, it's, it's good to see. So they're able to take care of their short-term obligations um, quite comfortably. Let's look at the cash flow statement next. Um, three key areas. Um, but well, we're not gonna get into details of the cash flow statement until we get to the report itself, so I'll, I'll save that. So what we have here is a cash flow from operations, cash flow from investing, and cash flow from financing. It's quite common to see the, the latter two in negative because that would be, you know, um, you know, whether investments being made, things like dividends being paid, you know, um, you know, interest payments etc again we will get that context when we get to the report but cash flow from operations for 2022 seemed pretty strong uh, best in in the last five years and um that's what we're going to take from it for now and we have um free cash flow being the best it's been in the last five years again that's something that we like to see and then we're seeing the change in terms of the year over year change and then the margins right Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, Dre, oh, wow, um, Saudi Arabia. Okay, interesting. Um, are you, are you, do you invest in the JSC, Dre? Is that something that you do or, or you're just interested in learning more about it? Let me know. It would be interesting to see or interesting to hear rather, right? These are some key ratios for Dolphin Cove. So, we're seeing return on assets being 8% as at 2022. Last 12 months, it's actually at 9.9%. Return on equity is 10% as at 2022. That's definitely, again, the highest in the last five years. So, so, so these ratios are trending in the right direction. Uh, we see gross, gross profit margin is usually above 88%. We saw it go to 81% in 2020. Um, let's look at net income margin as well. So it's almost at 20% for the last two years. Again, that would have been an improvement for on 2018, 2019. So these are, these margins are headed in the right direction. Something that we like to see in terms of some other ratios. We looked at current assets versus current liabilities already. We're not seeing the dividend yield here, but we'll, we'll get to the dividend payout later. And then we have, in, in terms of solvency at the bottom of the screen, total debt to equity is 4.9%, um, total debt to capital 44 and total liability, liabilities to asset 14.7. So these ratios, again, we're just looking to see how they are trending. A lot of persons may use ratios to try and get a good understanding of the company. Uh, so it's something that, again, if you want to kind of map and see how things have been trending, it would be something that can give you some context into the numbers themselves. All right. So we're going to look at the price history next. So let me try and bring up that screen here. Okay. They will think I'm sharing the right screen. Let me stop sharing, let me share again. So you should be seeing my screen now. So I'm on the JMB Moneyland platform. We're gonna go to other services, stock market summary. Then we're just gonna search for the cov that's the ticker name. And we're gonna go click on that and then we should be seeing it. Yes, you should be seeing what I'm seeing now. 
So in terms of volume today, this is June 8th, 5,600 units traded. It went to a high at 15.97, low of 1595. So not 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 a large spread there in terms of high and low. Open price was 1521. Let's see the overall trades. The highest volume for the day was about 4,800 units. Um, and these are all the trades that took place today, right? So a small number, as we mentioned before. And one of the things I really like about the Moneyline platform is the ability to see the time of the trade, the number of units, um, and these details, this helps you. So for example, if it is that the stock halted up for the day, this can let you know the exact time, the number of units, et cetera. So this is usually very helpful. In terms of, let's look at year to date, we see where it would have started the year at about $13 and, and 53. So it's actually grown since the start of the year, went as high as, um, well, it's showing 16 here, but I believe it might have gone higher this year. We'll, we'll, we'll look at some of the information to give us some more context. Let's look at the last year. In the last year, it's been, I remember it had a significant run up a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. So we're going to try and get that. You go to max because I remember it being somewhere close to $30. There you go. So this looks like 2022. So a year and a half ago, I remember when it was making its way to $30, there was a lot of, you know, discussions around the company. Could it break through $30, etc. Um, a lot of volumes were, were being traded during that point. Um, we saw 8 million units here in, in November 2021, this looks like. And you know, it, it went up almost doubled from that point when when that, uh, well, more than doubled that at that point. Let's look at the year to date. Largest volume we see for the year is about 1.4 million units. Remember, we saw where there's only 20 million units available outside of the top 10. So usually when we see this large volume, we can check to see if it was somebody from the top 10, depending on so usually we look to see if there's some notice or something to see if there was any sale from members of the top 10. Usually if it's a negligible amount, you don't really pay too much attention to it, but this is just something that we like to track. It helps helps us to understand a little bit more about how, how the company trades. Normally the volume though doesn't seem that high, you know, 30,000 units, 20,000 units, et cetera, less than 100,000. 400,000 here, but you're seeing the graph is mostly low, right? So not a lot of volume trades, as, as you can imagine, in terms of the queue. On the buy side, 19 orders going all the way down to $13.10. And on the sell side, uh, 40 orders going all the way up to $30. Maybe, you know, somebody would have bought at a high and is hoping to get back out at a break even or, or something to that effect, right? So that's what we're looking at for now. Let's go to, this is the Jamaica Stock Exchange website. This gives us um, some more details that we may want to look at. Um, so week to date of 6.3%, month to date 5.8%, year to date almost 17%. So I would have mentioned that it's been trending in that direction since it would have been higher you know, a year and a half ago. In terms of volume, as low as four units, we looked at that before, it was high as 1.4. And what we can do is look at the archives to see if there's anything, if there's any, so this was around May 25th. So we can look to see if there's anything that was reported in terms of trading in shares. Um, no, because we're already in May. So we haven't seen anything. So maybe that notice would come out soon but we haven't seen anything there. Number of shares outstanding, 392,000, so not a lot. 292 million, so not a lot there. Market cap of 6.3 million, okay? So let's go back to presentation now. Let me stop sharing. So reason why I'm not able to just automatically switch is because I'm using one screen for those who would have joined afterwards. So I'm just trying to figure out how to get back <laughs> there. Okay, 
think I'm there. Okay, great. I think you're seeing what I'm expecting you to see. Great. All right, so we looked at the overview of the price history. Let's talk about dividends. Now, this dividend information was taken from investing.com. I'm not entirely confident that the yield is accurate, so I wouldn't look at the yield, but they are showing here the ability to consistently pay dividends. Um, so that's a good sign if you're looking for a dividend company. The dividend amount has been fairly consistent from 2021 uh, of about 40 cents. As I said, the yield, I'm not sure. I couldn't verify that, that calculation when I was doing it on my own. And we saw where, of course, back 2020, 2019, a higher yield would be there, price would be lower. That makes sense. Um, but they do consistently pay dividend. That's something that's good to see. All right. So in terms of, before we get to the news, let's kind of look at the Q3, Q1 numbers and then the annual report. Where am I? Yep. All right, so this is their annual report for 2022. So this is the management discussion and analysis that we're going to read through just again to understand what's happening with the company here. So it says here for 2022, even though in our Q1, our operation was affected by the, the coronavirus, we managed to have a very good performance from April onwards thus closing there with more visitors than 2019, right? So we would have seen that in their numbers being slightly higher than 2019. The cruise segment was the main driver of these results. In spite of the lesser calls versus 2019, they had great growth in sales, great growth in sales per arrival and therefore better efficiency in the segment. On the other hand, the continued recovery of the hotel sector and the, and the exponential growth of the local market helped them to sustain excellent results for the year, right? So we're seeing this, this recovery. Um, so controlling their costs and expenses continues to be a very important factor in improving their results. For 2023, they will continue to work with the creativity service and teamwork, so on and so forth. Um, so this is from the managing director and CEO. In terms of general business condition, Conditions we're going to look into this. This for a company like Dolphin Cove, you really want to understand the drivers of their business. That's what this information tells you. So stopover visitors to Jamaica increased by 69%. This is in 2022, and decreased by 8% compared to 2019, according to the Jamaica Tourist Board. Then the the nationality mix was as followed was as follows, USA 75%, Canadian 11, European 11, other nationalities three. So cruise ship arrivals to Jamaica reflected in an increase of 1,104%. However, arrivals ended 45% below, right? So you're seeing the, the, the increase in one sense and you know decrease in, in others, the average Occupancy levels in Montego Bay, Ocherius, and Negril during the year were 39%, 21%, and 18%, respectively. All right? And this is what you're seeing in terms of visitors in 2019. That's a blue line, visitors in 2022, and then as at 2019. All right? So, so that's what you're seeing in terms of the numbers. Um, so this kind of helps you to understand, because, um, and the reason why you're seeing this information. They're showing you um, the, the correlation to their revenues and, and profits, right? So the, the more visitors, the more tourists, the more, the more the hotels are booked out, et cetera. This lends itself to more tours, more trips, more, more, more opportunities for revenue, et cetera. So they're not capturing the whole pie, but if we're seeing more overall, it will usually have a spillover. So again, you, you want to look at companies that maybe are impacted in a similar way. We have some other companies on the stock exchange that would have a similar impact. Those are things you want to look at. All right, so it's saying market share here, stopover visitors, and then cruise passenger visitors, and it's showing you where that information comes from. 
same for here. So you could go to those sources proactively and look at that information to get some, some, some context, right? So it says, despite the uncertainty to start the year, um, 2022 gave us an opportunity to enhance our strategies in different sales channels with extraordinary results. The recovery of the cruise business was indeed the main driver for the increase in the flow of guests and revenue generation. On the other hand, the great support from the local market continued to be very representative for the company. And finally, the hotel segment started to show a steady recovery, which contributed to the good results. All right. And then they're showing now the comparison of revenues. Um, they're going back all the way from 2015. So you'll be able to see that 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 context there, operating revenue. What I'm looking for is the outlook. So I'll just scroll through. Well-designed report, by the way, I really liked how it was put together. I believe this, no, I'm not there yet. Okay, this may be the outlook, is this it? Let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm just doing a quick scan here. Okay, no. so let's look at the three months report for 2023. So that's what we're gonna look at here now on this screen. So we have overall revenues now, this is showing in, in US dollars. So um, 4.9 million in terms of revenues for the three months, this is 88% higher than the three months for 2022. So that's already a good sign there. Um, profit after tax doubled um, what it was last year. Number of shares remain the same, of course. Earnings per share and dividends declared per share, same as previous years. Uh, so their Q1 is definitely off to a good start here. Revenues are higher. Profits have doubled, right? So it's definitely a sign that things have, have you know, are well on their way for, for recovery. So let's see if we can get some details as to why, right? Um, in Q1, the number of stopover visitors to Jamaica remained stable compared to pre-pandemic times, while the introduction of new mega ships significantly improved cruise passenger arrivals, providing Dolphin Cove with meaningful sales growth. Although the sales, although the increasing park visitors compared can be partly attributed to the pandemic lingering effects. It's worth noting that the number of guests in these three months was 21% higher than pre-pandemic. This impressive performance was made possible by their professional and experienced team, as well as their rigorous cost management and strategic capital investment. As a result, they achieved remarkable after profit, after tax profit of 1.6 million. Now that's 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 pretty good. Um, Let's see here for the statement of financial position. So working capital is has increased by 85%. Fixed assets remain the same. Net asset up 6%. Our debt to equity ratio um, is three to one, or is that how, how I'm reading this here? Um, it would be lower than, 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 than the previous period. Net assets per share. Um, seems to have increased by 6%, but it's still showing the same amount. So maybe they, the, the lower decimals are a little bit higher here. Uh, market price has, has decreased by 29% from the same period last year. Market price in terms of USD. And then you have the market and book value decreasing by 37%, all right? So I like how it, it compares these numbers here in terms of just giving you the, the key ratios for them. And then of course, just you know, showing how it would have compared to um, the, the, the full year as well, all right? So let me see here, let me just scroll through. I was hoping they would have had an outlook, not seeing an outlook. Um, okay. Okay, so it says, furthermore, the company's cash flow from operating activities was 1.6 million, which is three times higher than the cash generated in Q1. This validates significant investments made over the last 12 months, such as the facility, renovations, and new attractions at the, the Yaman 
Adventure Park, including the Fly High Five Station Zip Line, right? So that would have that was actually highlighted there in their annual report. I actually forgot to go through it, but they would have invested in a new attraction, which they're saying has led to um, partly what has attributed to the higher revenues. Okay, so investments are up to um, 1 million US. A trade and other receivables slightly higher here. Um, inventory is almost doubled. Cash and cash equivalents have decreased, but we saw that already. In terms of um, everything there looks the same. Accounts payable up by about 400,000 US. Dividends have not been announced for this period as yet, so that's why there's a dash there. And then taxation payable, payable is 239,000, right? Okay. All right, so we, we went over the revenues already from that summary. I don't think we need to go into them in terms of details. Just want to look at actually the expenses, see if there's anything here. So selling um, up by about 400,000, but of course, as revenues grow, then other expenses will grow as well. Other operations, about 100,000 US higher. Admin expenses almost three times. Maybe it's a case where some, some persons were maybe, maybe they scaled down the team for over the last couple of years and they are building back up. Um, but those admin expenses, typically they are broken out. We'll see if it, we'll see if this one is. Um, so profit before we spoke about that already, finance income. And so the net profit here, so their EPS has has doubled, right? So that's you know definitely a good sign. Things that we, we like to see. I'm going straight to the cash flow statement <clears throat> because there was something I was mentioned that I'm hoping to see. Um yeah. Mm -hmm. Interest paid, income tax paid. There was something in the paper about in the on the JC about them in terms of taxes. I'm gonna see if I can find that notice. Uh, repayment of loan liabilities, drawdowns on bank overdraft, a repayment of bank overdraft, and dividend paid. So dividend paid is there. And so cash at the end of the period slightly less than where it was before. Okay. Let me see if there's anything else that gives us some insight here. Um, okay. All right, let's close that out for now. All right, so I wasn't able to find any news about the company. The last article I found was actually written by David Rose in 2021. So I didn't know if that would have given us the context that we're looking for in the company to share that. So I didn't. But there was a notice about them that I'm hoping to bring up. Let me share that and I will talk about how things look for the company. Okay. Let me know if you have any questions about the company in the comments. I've been trying to go through the, the chat as best as I can. Um, thank you so much. Um, I'm really trying to put as much value as I can in the video. Happy that you're you're enjoying it. Adre saying thanks to you guys for imparting the knowledge. I've learned a lot over the short period of time. So I, I know that feeling. Um, just know that it's just a good thing that you've started, right? So it, it doesn't matter when you start. The fact that you've started is a good thing. I understand the feeling that it can be a little addictive in that sense we don't we don't typically want to lean into something that feels addictive that probably means that you're not you may get too pulled in emotionally and start to make some unsound decisions so try to remain level-headed um mastering your emotions can definitely help you in terms of investing uh, orville is asking is there any imminent risk you could identify in the medium to short term no I mean, the risk for this type of company, I think 
are, I mean, we, we, we saw one of the biggest risks to, to the company in the last two years. Now, the, the good thing is, I think that though they were able to, I think a lot of companies did like the ex, they did really poorly for 2022, 2021. Some companies still haven't fully recovered. They have, um, in terms of medium or short to medium term, actually think things are going in the right direction for them. So I think things, the way things are shaping up in terms of even the start to Q1, they could maybe have their best year that they've had in the last you know three to five years. Um, in terms of risk, it really comes down to because um, we know that the, the the COVID and the variants, et cetera, aren't fully gone, right? So some some companies, some, some places you still have to wear masks, some places you still have to be careful. That's probably the greatest risk I see. Um, anything that could impact whether a person's coming to the country, any, any um you know, legislation, laws being passed, anything that may want to keep people away from Jamaica for any reason. Those are the kind of risks I see. Um, you know, they're also, I guess, their company is built on, um, I guess, animals <laughs> or, or attractions rather. Um, so it could be that, you know, any challenges there, maybe there, I'm not sure what could, what could, um, impact things on that side. I'm not fully sure, but that's kind of what I could think of. It, usually when I think about risk, I'm thinking about anything that can Im impact the company's ability to generate revenues. If there's anything like that, then you could consider it in terms of how you'd view the company. Um, but in the short term, I would say they are shaping up to have a pretty good year. Uh, definitely maybe their best year in the last few years um, based on their, their, their paying dividends, based on... Um, okay, okay, I see what you're saying here. So a, na a natural disaster, the way that it would impact them is it depends on the location of the disaster. So if there's an earthquake in Jamaica, but not at the locations that they have their attractions, it's not going to impact them. If there is, um, yes, it depends on the nature. So for example, we have our hurricane season every year. That's something that they've been able to consistently grow their business throughout the, 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 the reality that we have hurricane seasons. We are seeing a fair amount of rain now in Kingston for example, those things may or may not impact um, persons and their willingness to do certain activities. So the rain itself, for example, may not impact the dolphins, but the rain itself may impact the other attractions that are there. Because I'm not going to do a zip line in, if, if it's raining. I'm not going to, you know, go, go to the zoo or do any of those kind of out-of-the-water activities if it's raining, right? So that could impact it. Um, hurricane to the country, yes, that would, right? Um, so that would be a risk to this kind of business. We have hurricane season every single year. We haven't had a major hurricane in quite a number of years, but that, yes, I'd say that is a real risk to a company like this, but um, it also depends on the length of the hurricane and whatever damage that hurricane may cause. So if it's a weekend, it, it may not move the needle for them. If we have like back to back two or three hurricanes in one season, maybe that's something that, that you could look to. All right, so I was trying to find information about their tax situation. Let me try and share my screen one more time. Okay. So this thing here on May 16th, Dolphin Cove was notified of a decision of the Revenue Appeals Division that that the assessment for 91 million 797 million referred to in note 26 of the audited financial statement is confirmed. Right, the assessment as determined on appeal is exclusive of any interest or penalties that may apply. 
the company is in a position to discharge any liability arising from the assessment without adversely affecting its operations as a leading entertainment facility in Jamaica. We are awaiting the council's advice. So this is something, so 91, let me check that amount here, 91 million Jamaican dollars divided by 150, so that's 600,000 US. We saw that their cash was 1.6 million US. So it is reasonable here for them to say that they can discharge that liability without impacting their, their daily operations. That does seem reasonable to say. Um, of course, maybe there are things that could be worked out in terms of you know, payment plans, et cetera. Just something to note. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. I didn't realize that the screen was hidden there. Yeah, so this is something that they will have to pay throughout the year. I imagine, again, as I said, there could be something worked out um, in terms of payment. I'm just looking to see if there's anything for them that would want to highlight. So dividend consideration for last year. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that'd be interesting to see. Um, I think more than if I was the one in that situation as a company, I have that tax liability of 91 million. I'd see if I can work out some sort of quarterly payment or so to ensure that I'm managing my cash well. They do have enough cash though, 1.6 million US on, 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 their, on, on their books for Q1, which means they can pay that and still have um, over a million US in cash. Um, so that's not necessarily a concern. And we are seeing where there was another company, I'm trying to remember, I think it was CPJ, that was, was noted to have a major tax liability. I think that was 298 million. So we are seeing where companies are, you know, maybe asked to now pay these lump sums. It's very interesting that those things are being assessed. It's very interesting, but of course, um, I mean, it happens, right? So I think that can be taken care of quite comfortably for them and it shouldn't impact their day-to-day -day operations, right? So if there are no other questions, as I mentioned, I think the company is shaping to have a good year. Uh, we want to watch to see how Q1, Q3 goes. But if Q2 comes and they're, you know, way ahead of their six months, I think it's safe to say they're going to maybe end the year better than they did for 2022 and the best that they've had in the last five years. It's going to be interesting to see how the stock trades. There is, you know, 5% outside the top 10, which is about 20 million shares. That's not a lot in the, in the grand scheme of things. So it's one that you have to be mindful of the volumes that trade now could they potentially do something like a you know stock split or something like that who knows they haven't mentioned any need to raise funds that i have seen um so that's something that you'd have to watch to see um but based on the number of shares it, it definitely could be interesting if you see potential for the company um there's value in shares with a small float it could mean that as as demand increases, the price also increases. So something that's that's interesting to see. So I want to thank you guys for being a part of this review. Let me know if you have any questions. As I said, leave them in the comments below. Remember the two questions. Um, have you ever visited Dolphin Cove? Have you ever been a part of the attraction? Have you, you know, had the experience? That's the first question to let me know in the comments below. And the second question, are you a Dolphin Cove shareholder? And, and do you plan to be? Is it on your watch list? Let me know. So thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you in the very next video. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn Grow Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-based financial coaching program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at learngrowinvest.